She could tell that he was lying there. She saved herself and got up out of there. She saved herself and she got tested. She learned from other people's lessons. She's one of the few that actually got the message. The blessings got everything but a blessing. Cause really, those diamond rings might impress her. You might get a hot minute playing dress up. But really, that's just the devil trying to test her. You gotta be smart and rise above the pressure. Yes, sir. It's like I don't know how to trust. Don't know if you're feeling running around like there's no one but us. You, but you know that I know that I want your body uh, uh, uh. That's how we do it on self, boy That's what they call it themselves Why don't you put out the lights, boy Why don't you turn the lights out And that's why they call it yourself, boy That's why they call it themselves wow. Why don't you put out the lights, boy Why don't you turn the lights out Satan is young, Satan is young, Who's an empty, who's an empty, I don't know what to say. 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 I don't know what to I don't know what I don't know what to I don't know it's like I don't know Ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, partners, affiliates, and friends, thank you so much for joining us. And welcome to our exclusive roundtable webinar of the docuseries, MTV Sugar, What Makes a Man? My name is Angela Khaili Siwe, and I'm your host for this afternoon. It is incredibly special for me to be here this afternoon as I share a very strong passion for the issues in this powerful movement as a champion for the fight against gender-based violence. MTV Sugar, What Makes a Man tackles the subject of GBV as a collective societal issue that can be solved only if everybody joins United to fight against it. This documentary includes notable South Africans, including myself, a TV personality and a champion as a GBV survivor and activist. Musician Big Zulu is also in the documentary. Rapper Maglera Doughboy also featured MTV based Culture Squad member. Uncle Vinny and radio personality, Buji Biikwa. I think it's so appropriate and profound that we're having this round table with this very powerful documentary at this moment when one of our friends and colleagues in the industry subsequently took his life this morning, which goes to show how important this conversation is. And more than just the conversation, the takeaways, the things that we can do as South Africans and people around the world. The documentary series explores the question of what makes a man engaging people from all walks of life across this beautiful country of ours. 
MTV Sugar, What Makes a Man, is inspired by the plight of women and men who have been affected by gender-based violence. What better time to raise consciousness and evoke meaningful and powerful action with International Women's Day approaching us on the 8th of March. Despite the advancement of women and girls to date, we cannot ignore the challenges and threats that we continue to face in South Africa and the world at large on a daily basis. Ladies and gentlemen, the upcoming video sets the tone for our proceedings this afternoon. Take a look. The MTV Sugar partnership with the Staying Alive Foundation has been one that has been in the forefront of edutainment. This has been a quite a powerful opportunity for us to really prioritize storytelling uh, and ensure that we use storytelling to address issues that impact society, but also leverage the power of content in driving meaningful change in behavior across our communities uh, on the continent. And we've seen MTV Sugar really playing an important part in making sure that we can make a difference. And what makes a man is that project that we hope will be able to demolish toxic gender-based violence. It's important for us to reflect on the plight of women, especially young girls in our society. Despite the enormous strides made in the advancement of women and young girls, we believe that this day is important to highlight very meaningful conversations and change mindsets, particularly because gender-based violence is something that is really impacting young people in our society in a very negative light. Today, I challenge you all to take all steps necessary to create communities where everyone can feel safe. MTV Staying Alive Foundation, together with Viacom CBS Networks Africa, along with our partners, are all committed to continue to drive content for change and ensure action against the fight against GBV. Wow, powerful words there by the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Paramount Networks Africa, Monde Twala, who's also my schoolmate, doing big things in the world. All right, so as the program continues for our audience, please don't shy away, engage with us. We've got our panels, three of them, um, you know, people in their fields who know what they're talking about that you would definitely want to hear, hear from. And so to join us in these conversations, simply type your comments and questions in the chat box. You know how these Zoom uh, situations work. But coming up is our first round, round table discussion. But before we go there, I've been wanting to see this too excited. Let's catch the first episode of the MTV Sugar, What Makes a Man? Are we good? That's a clap. My name is Ander Makai, and I am a man. I'm a South African man, an African man. But what does this actually mean? In a world and a society unraveling at the seams of tackling gender-based violence, in a time when we are trying to redefine our identity, navigating our trauma. Join me on my journey as I try to find out what makes a man. I'm seeking an understanding beyond shocking headlines of gender-based violence with people who have lived their own journey. Women have been killed as a result of gender-based violence. No, they need to know we are fighting for our rights. We are fighting for them also. What if a man gets a red dot in his field? One in five South African women have experienced physical violence by a partner. They are tired, they are killing us. Gender rights activist Andile Khaleshiwe has uh, formally laid a rape charge against her estranged father. I didn't do it for all these years because you're afraid of the system. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let me put it here. 
Hey boy, obviously you don't know me now, but um, Amanda, your father, I figured I should do this diary entry for you before I even meet you. I think me and your mother are very nervous. Everyone's nervous about your arrival. Um, apparently you could arrive any minute now, so I want you to know that I want to be there. Every step of the way, I want to be there for you. I'm not saying I'll be perfect. Know that I love you. Know that I care for you. Know that I will do anything in my power to protect you and to show you love. We named you Luaki because it's time to do it for you, Luna Wolaki. And don't you ever forget that. Guys, I've just arrived at the hospital. Uh, oh, I'm trying to rush. I'm about to be a father. I'm shaking. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to go into, into the hospital yet. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. Congratulations, madam. I remember when I first moved to Joburg, coming from a small town in Eastern Cape. I came here and I just saw everything being fast, tall buildings. Everyone is, is looking out for themselves, you know? You never know who are your real friends, who are not your real friends. And I don't come from a town like that. I come from a town where everyone knows everyone. I gave in to the pressures of the city. I found myself partying more than I should have. I found myself indulging in drugs, indulging in the culture of multiple women. And at that time, money was coming in, you know? I got excited. I'd never experienced a life like this. And now I've got a son. I mean, I, I didn't grow up with my father. And because of that, I'm worried with how I'm gonna raise my son. What kind of man am I going to portray to him to look, to look up to? Yes, we, we, gender-based violence is, is being led by men. How am I gonna ensure that my child doesn't grow up to be that man? Yo, you know this little He's the youngest uh, radio host in South Africa right now. I love you guys. Follow me on uncle.vino on Instagram. What better way to stop my journey in trying to understand what it means to be a man than speaking to a young man who is the quintessential cool kid of South Africa. Cover them swanko, cover the coolness, cover alles. They want to manage it as their color. Uncle Vinny, he's the ultimate club hype man with more influence amongst the youth than most politicians. He calls himself the president of the youth. I'm curious to know how he managed to navigate growing up in one of the toughest neighborhoods in Johannesburg and became a successful entertainer at such a young age. Um, how was it for you specifically growing up here? Were you, were you bullied or anything like that? How, how was that for you? No, bullying happens everywhere. I mean, being bullied, maybe I was bullied in high school because of the way I speak. I was going into a school where it was like just suburban kids mostly. You know how they perceive, like when come from the hood, they think you're gonna steal. What's good, boy? They think you're gonna steal, they think you're gonna do the weirdest stuff. What's good? Okay, so talking about bullying, right? What is your take about gender-based violence? With GBV, I just feel like GBV is, is the most wrong thing on earth to do. You can't scar another person because maybe you, you're feeling some type of way. So people who stab girls, people who burn them or whatever, I just feel like a sentence more less than 20 years in jail is nothing. Me personally, if you get physical with a honey, I, like, I don't look at you the same because, hey, there's a day she's gonna make you that angry and you're gonna kill her because you're not thinking. Like in South Africa, we're dealing with so many issues. We have so many issues that we have to address, like, but the big elephant in the room is just that this one is gonna be violence. So you never know. You think it's happening in the black community? You don't know what's happening on the other communities. You get what I'm saying? If you look at all the way around, look at our history. It's always war, 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 war. And people, the only language that they understand sometimes is fear. I feel like 
the whole men are trash culture and all yeah. that kind of stuff kind of puts us in a corner where whatever we say or do to a woman yeah. will come across as guilty of something. Like, for example, yeah. if you and I are standing here and a girl walks past and I go, do, 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 do. Yeah. look at that girl, you know? How do you react to your friends when they do that? How do you, how should we treat it? I think there's a difference between catcalling a woman and there's a difference between you admiring a woman. There's also the energy, you can feel it. Well, Uncle Vinny has a strong sense of values when it comes to gender-based violence, you know, and respecting women. And I think I want to raise my son to treat women with the same respect. Like, I'm in daughter, not a god, never. But when he does mention the whole aspect of men killing women, I can't help but just think about the closest woman in my life, my mom. So I'm gonna pay her a visit and hear her take, you know, when it comes to this kind of topic. Coming up after the break, I have a difficult but much needed conversation with my mother. If first birthday, I kill in a way and God do I get one cooler, one cooler, one cooler, one dollar. Go, 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 as a creature. Oh, I yonder. I never call. What twenty week? The figure twenty week in the name in a creature. And I never call. I am done. I'm a gabin to basan. They were excited. Oh, over, Ubana. Utter undergo. That responsible. So at what point do Colin go home and go? We are there. Click along the corner by Monty Bing. We are going to get a lot of that. Hey, what kind of mob is that? Where now? Where now? Come on, where now? Mob is mama not that. I can do good combo with the eye. Now I'm good at that. I'm doing combo with the mus. The azaz mus. Photo copy, copy and paste. Copy and paste. Now I'm good at that. What am I going to be telling you about up the age? Because I can't call because the pictures are so good up. See, so you can see that in 1997. I think the economy is going to be able to help you financially, as a financial support. But I don't know as the relationship with your nana and your daughter. I think it's going to be a good thing. It's going to be think because I, I feel when I look back, I feel like I did exactly what Utah did by having Umtana and then Uambe and then the Ambe and go and have another relation. I did exactly what Utah did. Yes. Na Utah wa koge na di mazi ukuba unenye uni relationship. Sele wenu kabilu nyaka. Because in a way, it, it makes me feel like I failed you. I saw Bakuba and Kukuli Sile, the expector in the Kukubana, your own windows are the ends, is a bind to a light. With the gender based violence up in South Africa, and Gok, you are born as a civil science. How do you feel? What's your, what's your view? In the ending, I eat you, you go Kubana, a band of a motat, must stop. Mm -hmm. Stop killing women. Kuba kwa nele. Every day. Kubo lawa umdo pinguleyo. No kukwa nele. Mm -hmm. Siangwanda. 
mauke ubu yela mteto. Wendamu. Wendamu. Mm. Uba ngabu ya mshambi. Kukegu tuwenje mnye ukanye babini kwa announce ne date mshambi. Mm. Sive, siyaze, ukubalo wawa ebulele ubani. Kutiu, mm. kutiu. I saw me pin the answer again. Ubanga banga buya londo. I understand my mother's feelings towards GBV and why I should want a death penalty for perpetrators. But I wonder if this is a solution that is best for us, fighting violence with violence. Should we need the death penalty as a deterrent to stop gender-based violence? I I know about when you Hearing my mother admitting to her own mistakes was uncomfortable, you know, especially because she made it feel like she's to blame. I mean, growing up, she gave me all the love I needed. You know, and none of us are perfect. I mean, she made it clear by pointing out that in Dunumtan, outside of a wedlock. You know, but instead, what I need to do is focus on taking accountability and responsibility in these male and create a healthy environment for my son. I mean, I was worried when she, or I guess, when she told me that she was worried about me wearing wigs and dresses, I did wonder whether how would she have reacted if I was gender fluid or gay? And whether or not me wearing wiki at that age, does it really define whether I'm a man or not? I mean, it's so down of indeed, you know? For sure I know that she's not homophobic or anything like that. Um, and that she truly would have supported me um, regardless of my gender or my sexual orientation. But it makes me wonder and it makes me realize how important it is for Rukmana from Danam, I create a very comfortable environment for him to express himself freely, you know, without any judgment. So yeah, I'm gonna be weak in a nini na. Yeah, um, you know, growing up at home in a loving and supportive environment, it really helped in, in making sure that in the Puman disaster, you know, getting a proper sense of self. But my school did play a huge part of, you know, me understanding my manhood. And since I'm in town, I decided, you know, let me go past there and, and have a chat with one of the students, Umninao Mayeteso, who has written a beautiful um, essay about gender-based violence and the pressures um, of being a young man. Going to an all-boys school had its own challenges. The pressures of a certain type of masculinity you are more of a man if you played rugby than did drama. You were supposedly more of a man if you were seen or known to have more or multiple women. But one thing remains engraved in my heart since I left the school. I'm a quicho. The chance that made us believe in ourselves and our dreams. The camaraderie it created to set path to be a committed young man with a positive mindset. I'll first ask you, what do you think is a man? What's, what makes a man? Um, for me, a man is someone who can stand up for what he believes in. So a man simply is someone who is himself, is comfortable with who he is, and then portrays that to the, to the rest of the world and does not feel pressured into being something other than who he is. Growing up, I was very close with my sister and we treated as equals. But as we started growing up, things started changing. Different things were expected of me, different things were expected of her. And do you think the, the expectations that came as you guys grew, uh, things that were expected from you versus her, it, it was, was it based on gender roles and, and that kind of space or what? Yeah, it was definitely based on gender because she's sometimes expected to cook more than me, for example, but you know, we are both in the same position. So I do try to assist in the chores, even though I'm not told, but to assist her, you know, um, because I feel like it's important for me to do my bit as well in the household. 
you know, just talk about equality, but actually like live that equality within my own life. Do you think that these expectations kind of, how did it affect your relationship with your sister? We struggle to relate to each other at some point because she's going through uh, different things, I'm going through different things. The relationship was tested in, in that respect. So I don't see myself as better than my sister because I'm male, or I don't see her as better than me. Um, we both have a mutual respect and a, and a deep appreciation of our differences. Um, I don't know, so, so Lugil, have you gone to the mountain? No, I'm going this December. You're going this December? Yeah. What are, you, what are your expectations? I think it's going to be a challenge, but also I, I'm looking forward because I feel like I'm going to learn so much more about my own culture, my own family. And then I'm going to learn more to be prepared for the role that I'm going to take up next um, as a man. Because mm. I feel like um, in Western society, being a man, it's just a matter of reaching the age of majority. Mm. Versus in our culture, it's something you have to earn. So I'm looking forward to having to earning um, the title and learning the responsibility that comes with manhood. How does that affect how you think now about gender roles? G gender roles are, are, are defined for us, really. So these are societal expectations. I want to construct my own role in terms of what I want to fulfill. Because for me, a man is not, for example, someone who's strong in the conventional sense or whatever. For me, a man is someone who's helpful in the household, someone who takes charge, who leads, but not necessarily by always being at the front. So it's important for me to define myself um, for myself and then expressing that um, in my family. I, I was really, I'm really fascinated by the, the way you think. Um... You know, I don't think when I was in matric, or at the time where I was in matric, um, I was thinking from this perspective. How do you think these gender roles play into the issue of GBV in South Africa? For me, being in this um, all, all boys school um, masculine space, masculinity is quite normal in and of itself. It's not a problem. I think what causes a problem is when people feel like they have to compensate for a lack of masculinity. So they feel like they have to resort to violence to take back their power mm. or whatever. It's not actually too much masculinity, it's too little of that masculinity and being comfortable with yourself. It's not only males, you know, who are part of the problem, it's the whole society and, and how we interact with, with each other as society. Wow. Our upbringing and environment definitely shape and mold us to be the men and people we are today. You can't get under us! You can't get under us! And as Ninawa mentioned, the gender roles between boys and girls, forced by society, may be part of the problem. You'll never get around us! you never get around us! GBV is not a male problem or a woman problem. It's a human problem. And Phineas has been standing in order to solve or eradicate it. And we too powerful! And we too powerful! I can't ignore the fact that statistics prove that, you know, most perpetrators are male. Makes me wonder, how can we be better men? Better people? It's clear this topic is even more complex than I thought. So we need to speak to more people. So join me in the next episode where I chat to Big Zulu, Andy Lechalisiwe, and Professor Langa as they share their personal journeys, healing our wounds, and eradicating generational inherited trauma and pain. We need a reason. Is this my main card? What a powerful, thought-provoking ducky series. MTV Sugar, What Makes a Man premieres exclusively on MTV Base, DSTV Channel 322, Tuesday, March 1st at 9.30 p.m. Central African Time and Wednesday, March 2nd at 10 p.m. West Africa Time. The MTV Sugar documentary series, What Makes a Man, is executive produced by and features star of MTV Sugar, Down South, Ayanda Makai. The issue of gender-based violence is close to Ayanda's heart, having portrayed the character of Saul on the hit MTV Sugar, Down South series, whose character is a perpetrator on the show. In this powerful three-part documentary series, Ayanda asks himself the question, 
What makes a man? And having recently become a new father, he seeks to set, set a, an example, and I'm sure a prime and real example for that to his son. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm now welcoming my panelists. And the first one is, of course, you, Ayanda. Welcome. Congratulations. Ooh, powerful stuff there. <laughs> Executive producer and contributor. And I've also got the creative director of MTV Sugar, What Makes a Man, Vincent Molloy. And then last, lastly, but not least, is Lindy Zamini, CEO of the Gender-Based Violence Fund Response One. So, Ayanda, I want to start with you. First of all, dude, we know how this industry works. You get an opportunity to executive produce, and the first thing you do is a docu-series called What Makes a Man? Why? Why that? Jeez. Um, firstly, thank you for everyone who's who joined us. Um, thank you that you can be part of this journey. Um, and also, uh, hopefully, you can take it and continue the conversation um, to all your individual spaces. Um, so Zandila, I think for me, what was really important here and how it really started was that I had to do a self-reflection. I got to a point in my life where I had to do a self-reflection, having hurt people to my journey to where I was, I realized I need to reflect and see, you know, what is it that, um, how can I be a better man and a better person, you know? Um, and so initially it started off just as, as an Instagram live thing where I was chatting to different men. Um, but I think as time went and I got the son, I started to realize that, you know, I, I can learn about myself, but what do I pass on to him? What man do I want him to be, especially in the climate we're living in, you know, uh, of GBV? I, I cannot make my own conclusions uh, and misguide him, you know? So I then embarked on the journey to say, you know what, it's time we bring men into this conversation. Um, it's time we find out from different people from every corner of walks of life um, and get into the room and just talk about this, you know? Yeah. Because it's so easy to hide behind cell phones and, and computers and so forth and point fingers. You know, the conversation had was initiated. It started, we started blaming, we started opening, which is great. But how do they move towards change? And I think that's what yeah. really inspired me. And I mean, I must say, as a, as a gender-based violence activist for so many years myself, I know that there's nothing new under the sun that we need to do to fix mm -hmm. what's happening in our country or even in the world. So much has been done already. What it is, is exactly these powerful words, that action. What then happens? And more, more than anything also, including everybody into the, into the conversation. I know I've got questions and for my guests, please bringing those questions. I know one of them is about some of the contributors because they're alleged GBB perpetrators. Why do we have them? And my understanding is that you want exactly those people into this space, right? So I know even having had a conversation with you, you're very passionate and have strong feelings about South Africa finally one day being a GBV free country. How do you think besides this docu, how, how do we do that? How do you do that in your life? Well, I mean, I've been, I've been fortunate, you know, uh, with my journey with MTV Sugar that um, when I took on the role of Saul, I really got to understand, um, and I might not fully understand it because I haven't, I haven't been a perpetrator in my, in my reality, but as a character, I had to step into a place where I cannot judge him and, and believe what he's doing is right. And so just having to go into that space kind of made me take a step back and go, whoa, there's a deeper thing here. This guy isn't just being abusive for the sake of being abusive or it's a hobby or he's bored. There's something that's happening here. There's a root cause. And so in having, you know, traveled the country with MTV Sugar, speaking to young boys, um, well, and even young girls, and speaking to just the youth about sexual reproductive health, I realized there's a gap um, for young boys specifically where they feel like they don't have an older brother to talk to, right? Um, because the men in their lives maybe, you know, come and go, you know, either it's an uncle or it's, a, it's the neighbor or it's the pastor, whatever it may be and they don't have the courage to speak to them. And so I thought, you know, it's important that we become uh, those figures in society, society, especially if we've been blessed with the gift and, and the platforms that we were blessed with. 
Um, and so I think for me, just doing it practically was a matter of, you know, going around the country, speaking to schools, using my social media platforms, um, but also reflecting my mistakes. You know, um, I'm not perfect. And I'm not saying after this documentary, I'm going to be perfect. I'm going to walk a straight, a straight line. I'm going to try to because now I've got a child who looks up to me. Yeah. But the reality is that we are human. And so it's important that when we teach uh, or when we speak to men about this, we also reflect our mistakes and our faults so that they know that, okay, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, yeah. we've done mistakes and we've done faults, but someone is willing to allow us into the room and have a conversation. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. Let me ask my last question and just a bit of an indulgence. Did you get somewhere to a place where you felt like you kind of understand from all these, because your interviews from what I just watched now were very hard hitting, very real. So do, do you at least have somewhat of an inkling of what actually does make a man? Um, <laughs> It's funny because in, in episode two, we meet um, yeah. Professor Langa, you know, who says his book is titled Becoming Men, right? And, and from meeting him and, and his chat, I, I soon learned that this is not something that has a definite answer and a full stop. You're always mm -hmm. becoming a man, you right? That's it. Uh, whenever you're traveling, you're always becoming a man. But the, one of the biggest lessons, and I've gone to tattoo it on my arm, it's written what makes a man on my arm. Wow. Um, what wow. I've tattooed here wow. is a lesson wow. I've learned, which we need to strike a balance between our femininity and our passive side as men, but also strike a balance with our masculinity and our aggressive side. And I think once we strike that balance, knowing when to stand up and be strong, but also knowing when to break and reflect our pain. And that's powerful. Life is about homeostasis, isn't it? Yeah, that is very yeah. powerful. Vincent, I want to bring you in. It looks amazing. It feels like it's gonna tug at my heartstrings. I mean, I saw a clip of myself there. And I'm like, ah, the ugly cry is about to come. I'm not trying to go there. What, what was it for you? What did it take for you? I mean, to put this whole thing together. Uh, unmute. Yeah, sorry about that. So yeah, I mean, the, the premise of it all is that we have to have a discussion, a very direct and honest conversation about these issues in a way that, you know, when we create, we sort of in a process of questioning things um, in, in an attempt to uh, open a way or forge a way forward in, for a better life, for a better environment for all of us. Uh, so there's a lot of things to consider. And, and one of those things is that you have to be very sincere and honest um, about the issue and respectful to the people you speak to because they're giving you their own story. So you always have to tussle with how do you represent their stories in a way that they can see it and then they can feel the heart of it. Uh, and be proud of it, that they've told their story. So there's a lot of consideration in how we're gonna layer that. Uh, this was not gonna just be a documentary. It, it had to have a an heart. And part of what makes something has a heart is when you can feel that it's authentic. It's not, there's no filter that's put in front yep. of it. It's not classified. So the conversation were, really, we're real and we're honest. So we look at social media today when people uh, talk about their feelings, whether they are driving and they're breaking down and they need to speak the world, to the world, they use their cell phones. So we have to employ some of those things. But also we had to remember this is a conversation. So it's okay sometimes for two people to sit there and have a conversation without all the visual gymnastics. So we had to find a hybrid of different ways of representing this. But what was more particularly important was how do I, as a filmmaker, represent myself in it? 
uh, because I'm not just a filmmaker. I'm also a contributor. I also care about the product. I also uh, um, I'm part of society. And, and so there's always a tussle about, well, there's something that a client wants, but there's also something that a contributor gave. And there's also something that Ayanda wants to put across. So the tussle is always that, how do you balance all of that and still maintain the integrity and the authenticity of, of their ways? But also just like on gen in, in general, this is a very important subject that we have to be sensitive about, that we yeah. make sure, we must make sure that we are not judgmental in the way that we present it, but not shy you away. Did a great from, job. Uh, not shy away from the uncomfortable uh, conversations that we, yeah. we have to engage with. No, thank you so much, Vincent. It shows you 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 did a, a stellar job. Congratulations to you. And I know what it's like being the talent exec and then the director here, your ideas, what is real and the product at the end. You guys did amazingly. I mean, it's at this point where I'm asked, since we're talking about such um, heart pulling, you know, heart string pulling issues, why um, gender-based violence is such an important uh, part of my life. Well, first, because I, I went through it um, not once, twice, three times in my life. And I've lived in this crime scene, which is where this whole, all these crimes took place all of my life. And it's taken me, you know, as much time, in fact, even more to try and get myself to that balance I was talking about, to that homeostasis where life is good and life, you know, where you can dream again and be you. Because these, these are the things about some of these social ills is that they, they even stunt our growth. So, and, and one of the questions that was put to us, to me was, what, what, what would I say to a victim of gender-based violence right now? Right now, be selfish. If you've just gone through the act of being violated, be selfish. It's all about you. It's nobody matters at that point. Not the perpetrator, not your mom, not the police. It's about you. What you need to get yourself to that rusa, to that space of calm, you're not stuck. You do that for you. And then start the journey to healing, you know. Um, this Lindy, I want to bring you into the conversation um, at this point. I know that. Um, you are responsible for the gender-based violence uh, response uh, one fund, which the president also endorsed. What, what is your mandate in, in a South Africa that is bleeding like this? Mm. Um, Angela, you'll know as an activist that it was civil society who back in 2018 really militated and raised the tempo and raised the volume and elevated the voices of so many women in society, of so many people who were really struggling to transition from being victims to survivors and said enough is enough. If this is a democratically free South Africa, it's got to be reflected in our freedom to be, in our freedom to inhabit spaces in our freedom to self-actualize, our freedom to participate in the economy. And so it was following that, that uh, um, it was agreed at the presidential summit. I will never forget the activist who lifted her top and said, look to the president, if we must go that far to make our voices heard. So, wow. I mean, one of the things that then happened at, at um, the summit that took place in November of 2018 is it was agreed that a national strategic plan on gender-based violence is important and must be established. And it was launched on the 30th of May, 2020. The objective being to bring the various spheres of our society from government to civil society, to uh, uh, corporate and so forth to say, government can't fight this alone. Civil society can't fight this alone. It really will take every man, woman, and child um, for us in our lifetime to see the scourge dispensed with, to see a South Africa um, not reflected as being at the top of the rate of femicide. Um, mm. It is a scourge and a shame, and it is so far a departure mm 
from, from, from our democratic dispensation and our constitution. And so the fund then is a product of that national strategic plan because it was clear that for the work to happen, resources have to be raised and deployed. We know that there are so many organizations on the ground working hard, overburdened, under-resourced. And so the fund came about to raise resources. And we've been very fortunate in the philanthropists and uh, corporates, as well as the social development sector that has contributed to the fund and enabled us to deploy funds to those organizations that are fighting on the ground. And as an ordinary South African, I mean, I'm, I've been in the gender-based space uh, since 2002, and I, and I know when you talk about organizations struggling, we struggle on a daily basis where you don't even have petty cash, you don't have a car to take a victim, you know, who's just landed in your office to now get a district surgeon. So how, how, how does the ordinary South African benefit from this fund or, or the, the organization do people come yeah. and apply? How does it work? That's how it works, Angela. Um, not long after the fund was, was established, we called for proposals. And we really said we want to focus on pillars two and three because that's where we felt there's a need for a heavy impact and an immediate impact um, to be made. Social cohesion, really dealing with the very subject that we are talking about. Toxic masculinity stereotype, heteronormative uh, uh, behaviors, and how do we start to, to ensure that we have a better understanding of gender and we stop other rising people. And so the mandate yeah. of the fund was really to make sure that the funds that have been raised go far and wide. They go to organizations that previously have not been reached. We focused on rural areas. We focused on uh, uh, um, provinces that previously have been underfunded, such as KZN, the Eastern Cape, Limpopo. We had to focus on hotspots. We know that there are several areas in our country that are seeing a burgeoning and an ever increasing um, incidence of the scourge. And so we went beyond the 30 that are identified by the SAPS. And we actually, with the assistance and support with researchers, academics, uh, academics, as well as um, civil society organizations and additional 15 organizations. And so as far as possible, our responsibility was to ensure that we go far and wide. We account to the public for what we've done. All this information is on our website so that everybody knows um, that in my area, this is where I can go for help. And this is the kind of help that is available in my, in my space. So the 110 um, community-based organizations across the country and the four large uh, uh, um, intermediary organizations, including Childline, who are a partner of yours, um, have been funded by us in this year, and we, fund, we are funding them over two years. We believe it's critically important because the fight has to be sustained, Andy. Oh, Ms. Lind, you've said a mouthful, and it's the truth. The fight definitely has to be sustained. We have girl, girl children, boy children, you know, gurraf langapant. But thank you so much, guys. And I'm glad to see that you guys have partnered because also the other thing is, as a TV maker, and I love what Ayanda has done, you know, no Vincent. We, we, we watch television for entertainment and, and always forget that television, radio, in fact, they, the, the entertainment space can also be utilized as a way of changing society and educating. I remember when I started doing TV all those years ago, the big uh, word then was edutainment. You know, mm. so so to see that there's, there's, there's real stories that are out there, it's not a drama. This is someone's life, they're living it and the support. Thank you so much. And thank you to both of you guys and congratulations once more. Thank you. All right, so now we are thank going you, to you. go. Thank you guys. We are now, um, I hope my panelists are getting ready. My second um, panel group and I invite them now. I'm talking about my other schoolmates, Nomondo Konega, Yebo Siopa, Head of Public Policy, Southern Africa Region for Meta. I've also got Kadim Khan, Research Manager, Data for Good at Meta too. And I've also got Dr. Renata Talarico, Youth Team Lead and SYP Regional Coordinator for UNFPA as Ezaro, I hope I said that correctly. So Nomonde, let me start with you. Um, how is Meta involved in this initiative, being that you are like a big media partner? Um, thank you so very much, Angela, and greetings to everyone. Very, very great to be here. 
So as Meta, we are super excited um, to collaborate with MTV Staying Alive Foundation on the MTV Sugar What Makes a Man series here in South Africa, what we commonly call M Sawawa. Um, as Meta, we also identify with MTV Staying Alive's foundation's goal of delivering real social change. And we are really, really honored to be partners of this particular series, building on the success and the impact of the MTV Sugar series across the continent. The problem of gender-based violence has taken center stage in recent years. South Africa has one of the highest rates of intimate partner violence in the world, with instances of gender-based violence in the country having surged during the pandemic's lockdown, prompting several protests in the country in response to these tragic events. Our collaboration on the MTV Sugar What Makes a Man series is inspired by our commitment to safety and the plight of women and men who have been affected by gender-based violence. Thank you so much. And it's visible. We appreciate that. It's, it's always a public-private partnership when these issues are concerned. Kadima, I want to come to you. I know that in order for us to respond to these issues and respond effectively, research has to be done. We need to know what's where, you know, how can... So tell us how research, that's your division, how that played a role in this. Thank you so much, Andele, and for the question. So um, I'm a research manager on the Data for Good team at Facebook, and our team's mission is to provide partner organizations with privacy preserving data and insights to help solve social problems. So we worked with the MTV Staying Alive Foundations and their partner at the University of Western Cape and the University of Maryland to produce an insights report, which was about you know, really assessing public Facebook uh, posts and conversations about hypermasculinity and gender-based violence in South Africa. And using these insights from these posts, the MTV Staying Alive Foundation crafted a storyline to, you know, that was relevant to what we were seeing in, in public conversations and so on. Furthermore, we're assisting the MTV Staying Alive Foundation to launch an on-platform digital campaign and we'll be measuring the impact of the campaign using a live survey to assess, you know, the ability of the campaign to, to disseminate those positive messages. So the meta team really wanted to bring rigor, uh, research, data, and insights to the entire process. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. It, you did incredibly well. It's visible. Dr. Renata, um, let me come to you. So how does partnering with MTV Sugar, What Makes a Man, help your mandate at the UNFPA? Thank you very much, Andile, for the question. Um, let me just say, maybe not everybody knows what UNFPA is. Uh, UNFPA is the United Nations Population Fund and, Fund and is the United Nations Sexual and Reproductive Health Agency. Our mandate has its foundations on three specific zeros zero preventable maternal deaths, zero unmet need for family planning, and zero GBV and harmful practices. And we added for our region specifically a fourth zero, which is zero sexually transmitted HIV and AIDS. So surely it is clear how this partnership with MTB Sugar has a direct impact on our work towards achieving our key result, which is zero gender-based violence, and indirectly influencing the achievement of the other zeros. So our mandate specifically focusing on women and young people, both boys and girls. And gender-based violence is really not a concern that does not affect one category of people specifically or one specific sector. It is a multi-sectoral matter that has to be tackled at individual, societal, and environmental levels. In other terms, the fight against GBB does not exclude anybody. We are all in it together. So your NFP calls for bodily autonomy, self-determination over your own body. We are the only ones who can decide what to do with it. And to do so, we make use of various strategies, including partnering with partners like MTV Sugar. And um, what we realized is that indeed partnering with MTV Stingler Foundation and Mentor would have been a great opportunity to advance, advance our mandate 
but really to do our part in raising awareness against GBV, while ensuring though that young people, gatekeepers, law enforcers, perpetrators, really very many um, important stakeholders uh, in this fight will have a lot to reflect on while watching the documentary. And the final hope is really that this will ignite change and promote positive masculinities. Thank you, Andini. Brilliant. Thank you, Dr. Renata. But do you think that this partnership will also benefit other countries on the continent? Yes, totally. This partnership is supported by a UNFPA and UNICEF joint program on empowering women and girls in South Africa, but is also funded by a UNFPA regional program called Safeguard Young People Program that is actually running in 12 countries in Eastern Southern Africa. While the documentary clearly reflects the reality of South Africa, the messages it contains resonate across countries and continents because GBV is really a global phenomenon. It's not a South Africa specific phenomenon. Yes. So the regional program will be a launching platform for the documentary to be seen across the implementing countries. And the SYP focus on young people, both boys and girls, and I think it's important to stress that it's both boys and girls, makes the cause for the spilling over effect even more compelling. So allow me to please share some statistics around gender-based violence across the region. And as I mentioned numbers and proportions and percentages, I would like our audience to think about the fact that those numbers are actually people, and specifically your sisters, your mothers, your neighbors, and so on and so forth. So in seven countries in Eastern Southern Africa, 20% of those aged 15 to 24 have reported um, to have experienced sexual violence from an intimate partner. Sexual violence against early adolescents aged 15 and below in countries where there's conflict or post-conflict at the highest rates. In terms of diversity, let me mention that women and girls with disabilities are estimated to be up to 10 times more likely to experience sexual violence violence in this range, range between 40 and 68% of girls with disabilities below the age of 18. And fewer than 10% of adolescent girls aged 15 to 19 asked for help after having experienced forced sex. So let me conclude here, since I believe really that the numbers um, in brackets, the people I've mentioned, um, yeah. uh, clearly states why it is important for this documentary to go beyond South Africa and benefit also other countries in the region. Thank you very much, Andile. Wow, guys, thank you so much. You do incredible things at your stations and really it takes like what we said at the top of the show, only if we all unite and put resources together, one mind, one thinking, one goal, Someday something will give and we'll see a better world, GBV free. Thank you so much. All right, now as I prepare for my next panel, for you an audience member, if you're just joining me, you should know that MTV Sugar What Makes a Man premieres exclusively on MTV based DSTV channel 322 Tuesday, March 1st at 9.30 p.m. Central African time and Wednesday, March 2nd at 10 p.m. West African time. And so now for my final panel, I've got, yes, I've got everybody here, yes. Um, I've got Yvonne Dio Diogo, Country Director, MTV SAF, Bulela Nimboto, Social Entrepreneur and Filmmaker, Wonga Makwangeni, Peer Educator. If I butchered your name, please butcher my surname. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Yvonne, let me start with you. So what do you hope this movement, the What Makes a Man movement, because this is where I see this documentary, Dr. Um, um, uh, Talarinko was just saying now, Renata, that they're going to make sure that other countries also, you know, get to see this. So it clearly is going to become somewhat of a, of a movement. What are you hoping to achieve with this? Absolutely. It's uh, with every MTV Sugar initiative um, that we develop, we intend for it to be a movement and it naturally and organically um, unfolds as such. With MTV Sugar presents what makes a man, we certainly do not uh, wish to dictate to any individual or community. In fact, we hold highly the principle of inclusion 
And so when we speak of this principle, we are not only speaking to males, to females. We are speaking to other genders, those who identify as transgender, um, non-binary. And so it's an invitation for each of us to self-reflect and really look at our day-to-day -day behaviors um, and what potentially has, you know, uh, brought about the numbers that uh, Dr. Renata just highlighted for us. So it's really an invitation for all of us, uh, regardless of our of our um, our gender and our sexual orientation as well, to truly self reflect. Um, and you know, Angela, when we speak of gender based violence and even the acronym GBV, it tends to water down the problem. This is a huge problem. And so when we look at all. Um, you know, the different forms that it manifests, manifests itself in. When we look at domestic violence, we look at the issue of rape, sexual violence, we look at corrective rape um, and sexual harassment. We look at uh, pr the principle of consent. So the minute we really slice it up and, um, you know, cast a lens on it, it really, you know, shows the magnitude of the task at hand. And so, it is going to take collective effort and hence this invitation to all of us to truly self-reflect. Powerful. So I love uh, outreach things. I like that we can put a documentary on TV, we can have a series, we can do a podcast, but what's practical? What is practically tangible? What am I gonna touch? So I love that I hear with the, with the series, we have an outreach um, aspect of it. Please tell me more about Absolutely. that. So with uh, contributions from our funders, UNFPA, Meta Africa, as well as the US mission to South Africa, what makes a man is possible. But more specifically with funding from the US mission uh, to South Africa, a personal development program called MTV Sugar Peer Education is going to be uh, launched in the month of March and it will be rolling out. And so really what this is, it is a course that is targeted at not only young people, but their caregivers as well. And it aims to really look at the matter at hand. Um, and the main focus um, is Ubuntu. And that directly translates mending humanity, mending ourselves. And through that outreach program, that's where we will be able to then disseminate the necessary knowledge, resources, and skills for individuals as well as communities to see the changes in attitude and behavior that uh, we really need to see. Powerful. Oglungi sa Ubuntu. Wow. This is Zulu City Masbuele Masiswele. So I don't know how to directly translate that in English, but it's, it's something along the lines, as, as things change, they stay the same. So we go back to source, go back to, to the beginning. So, Mofunuglungi is Ubuntu. Ooh, that's powerful. So then, Bulelane, let me bring you in here because now you the peer educator. So what do you think, and, and I, you've been doing this for over five years in your various communities. How do you think your now this MTV base, I mean this MTV Sugar Ubuntu is going to impact, you know, young people, the caregivers, the society in general? Okay. Thank you, Susandil, um, for the opportunity. First, I need to thank um, Uayanda No Vincent for this wonderful piece of work. Um, I had goosebumps while watching it. Um, well done to you guys. Well, um, I think um, the response to this is young people need to support, need the support of the adults in their lives. Bulelan? Oh, Bulelana, oh, frozen. Uh, Wonga, I see you. While yeah. Bulelana is frozen, 
let's see if we can get him sorted technically. But let me then jump straight on to you. So you work, you're a peer educator. You work uh, with young people in schools at Kaya Licha. What message do you have for AMA perpetrators with gender-based violence? Um, okay, and what is Andilena? Um, good day, everyone. So, um, in our line of work, now, we don't only see these scars caused by EHBV only. We see the fear of how young girls, women, gays, lesbians, and trans transgender individuals live their lives on a daily basis. So, women and young girls in the LGBTQI um, community are the primary targets of sexual harassment in broad day life, in broad day life like here in college especially. Like um, in our work, so we have young people who confide, who confide in us about the violence taking place in their communities, um, at homes, um, as well as in their daily lives, even at school. So GBV damages the spirit of young ones and can rob them from achieving their goals. So the perpetrators must just try and stop what they're doing because um, it's inappropriate. It damages young women. Like it stops them from going forward with their dreams. Like people um, get up, end up doing drugs just because of yeah. GBV. Like people, it, especially in the co in the township communities, like you, we experience it a lot. Like young people tend to leave school and focus on hustling, and they call it hustling because they hustle in a inappropriate manner. So, I think the perpetrators must just stop because we are tired of our young sisters. Um, thank you. Kautu Wonga, just there for a second, while we're waiting for our social entrepreneur and filmmaker, Bulelane, to hopefully join us, uh, okay. do you speak to young men about what you see? I'm a perpetrator, because these perpetrators, you know, they, they walk among us, they live among us, you know, uh, for those in relationships, you sleep with the enemy. So, Nina, man, kuluma in your spaces. Do you have these conversations about lendoi choyong It stops a woman from dreaming. It it does. It stunts your growth. If you don't heal, you stay there and you grow up and still be that little girl, little boy who was violated. So, um, yeah, I would just speak about this, especially as young men. So, like, whenever see is not much like we are in our space. So. We try and address this matter, like um, beating up a girl. Like it's totally an offside. When you, if, even with my friends, we talk about this every, every time. Like whenever you beat up a girl, yeah, well, just find a way of sitting down with the person. That's our solution. Sit down with the person, and then talk things through. Like try and find a solution instead of raising a hand. Um, yeah, that's not that's really what's not the best solution that we came up with. Uh, we always come up with sorry. Thank course, Bob. I appreciate that. And also on top of that, add also how to deal with those emotions in that moment that that moment that could change your whole life, whether you hit someone or you rape them. Gulama, gulama conversations with young men. Add that, that control of your anger and walking away and you know all those things. But thank you so much. Bulelani, okay. you're back. Unmute. Oh. Eh, You can hear me. All right. Yes, we can hear you now. Uh, rephrase your question. Sorry, um, I was struggling here with the network. Oh yes, yes, but yes. No, I was talking. Yes, I was talking about um the fact that you had been a peer educator for five years and how you thought that yes. Ubuntu, that program, how is that going to add value to communities and young people? Absolutely. Um, basically, we, as I was just talking and making a speech per se, um, it's more about now getting to the ground, to the people, young people like now, when you are in the township, it's like we are living in the jungle, which is not necessarily so. 
However, with the program that we have now um, as MTV Sugar, this is program that is there to empower these young people. Remember, we don't have, in many homes, we don't have that voice of reason for many young people. The only time they get to get that voice of reason is when we come with such programs that empowers them now enough so that they understand what is Ubuntu or Ukulungisa Ubuntu. This is only about now molding the young people and make them understand that actually also learn or you're not animals. You have emotions and which is these are the emotions that now we need to train or teach ourselves as young people on how we can move or how we can grow together, how we can support each other. And in moments of crisis, how we can always ensure that these, there are better ways in dealing with such moments of crisis. So in essence, I'm trying to say that these are the tools that MTV Sugar will be bringing to the communities moving forward in terms of empowering young people so that they understand what it means for them to be, for instance, in case of boys, to be a man or a young man and to also respect other genders as well. Zayan. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much, uh, Bulelani. I don't know if um, I hope everyone can hear me. Yes, um, I wanted to just highlight um, Andile. We had a question um, in the in the chat just about how the movement um, addresses, you know, the 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 theme of healing, and in the peer education program, that is actually one of the the um the modules so um there's a whole session there not only for survivors um of gender-based violence but also their supporters as well and so to find out more about this um the anybody who is interested is welcome to look up the hashtag mtv sugar peer ed and follow the handles um at mtv sugar down south and MTV Staying Alive uh, Foundation, um, as well as visit the mtvsugar.com uh, website. So the peer education program, as mentioned before, launches in the month of March. Um, and we're looking really forward to, um, you know, having as many um, as possible really participate and join the program. And um, although it's going to be rolled out in select communities, through um, interpersonal means, so face-to-face. -face. Um, if you may not necessarily be in that community physically, it is also possible for you to take benefits um, and enroll. Um, and because the course is distributed uh, virtually through Facebook. And so by following the hashtag MTV Sugar Peer Ed, you'll be able to access the content. Thanks, Andile. Thank you. So I had a technical glitch after Bulelani, but I'm back. Yeah. And this is how we now, thank you so much, my brother. Thank you to my panelists, the last panel. This is how we now come to the end. But uh, Yvonne, should we, before we close to the member, I mean, before we open to the, the members of the media for questions, should we take uh, the questions from the audience? Because I saw that we have some. Yeah, so we had a question. Um, what response are you hoping to get from GBV victims? Do you think the series yes. will happen? And so the answer I believe we have covered in that- what you've covered, all right. Correct, all right. the peer education program. Uh, we've also got Sabelo who asks, uh, what are we truly, are we truly doing justice towards this topic if we don't talk with a man on the ground, um, you know, the issues that they face? Um, and so, um, Sabelo, this is very much included in the docu series. So, what we what we screened this afternoon was episode one, which will um, broadcast on MTV Base uh, from the first of March. It is um, a three part um, um, episode or series, 
And so you'll be able to catch it over a course of three weeks. Um, in addition to that, the personal development uh, program, which is the peer education. And so all, all um, you know, genders can access that content. Um, and then let's just see here, the, 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 the question here, Wonga speaks exactly what vulnerable groups go through. It is motivating to see young men like himself playing their part in engaging their peers. So well done there, Wonga. And then we've got Resejo, who is from Botswana. He says, um, mine is not a question, just a general comment. Um, such project, it's such projects that help fight gender-based violence within our respective countries and globally. In my home country, Botswana, the government is doing all it can, but they cannot fight alone. Therefore, this movement, what makes a man? Because of its inclusivity, I would say we are in the right direction in fighting different pro problems that we face regardless of where we are based. I love the fact that it touches and challenges different topics, GBV, sexual violence, and the like. Um, and then we've got Josh uh, from Ghana. How do I create content from this project? Um, Josh, um, what I'll do is I'll type a response, uh, quickly my email address and we can engage, or you can DM at MTV Sugar um, on social media, either Instagram, um, and I will get I will get that notification, and then we can follow the the conversation. So I think that might be the quickest way. Uh, if you can DM um, at MTV Sugar down south, and then we can take the conversation further for Ghana. Lisiba, what is the documentary covering under me? Um, this is NTAL Health, as our people are still understanding what mental health plays a very important role in alleviation of GBV. So Lesiba, in terms of um, the peer education uh, program, it's actually based on um, emotional intelligence theory. And as MTV Staying Alive Foundation, we've incorporated um, as an, another element, which is sexuality intelligence. And so mental health is also covered in there. Um, however, we do know that um, in isolating GD, GDD, as we have done, um, you know, with the program, program such as What Makes a Man, mental health is, you know, that dire um, um, a theme as well that also needs um, its own focus. So definitely opportunity for us to take that on as well. Um, and then Josh says, since I do have access um, let me just scroll down. Since I do have access to some young talents interested to be featured. So this is casting. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Casting calls from time to time. Please follow at MTV Sugar Down South on your favorite social media platform. Um, and we always have, you know, uh, both a public audition as well as a, a closed one as well. So that there, there might be opportunity for you. Um, and then the last uh, comment. Andile, it says here, yeah. Bougie and Big Zulu are alleged perpetrators of uh, GBV. Um, the question is, what is their role on the series and how do they feel about GBV? Um, do you want to maybe respond to this, Andile? I mean, for me, it's, it's pretty simple. It's, it's that you cannot leave people out of a conversation as pertinent as this. How else are you gonna get into a psyche of somebody who's walked that path? You have empathy for me when I speak on television or in an interview as a rape survivor, because you can empathize, you can put yourself in my shoes. How's about we put ourselves in the shoes of those who actually perpetrate or are alleged to have perpetrated? So with these two gentlemen, um, I was also shook when I found out about that. Um, but the thing about it is in their personal lives, especially for Obuji, I know that he's, he's come out to say that he takes responsibility for what he has done. But for me, what's important about this documentary is that if we're really wanting to get down to the bottom, to the core of what's ailing us, because this, this is somewhat of a, a disease, sickness, then we need to have conversations with everybody, include everyone and hear from them. So I would suggest to Anonymous, I saw the question, watch the docuseries over the three, uh, the three weeks. Uh, when I spoke to Ayanda, we spoke at, at length also in terms of his questions, his questioning to them in his quest as a man, because did, should he had not done that, we, we then would have 
been singing Kumbaya, as he says, Ayanda. This is not a Kumbaya documentary. This is a hard hitting, let's look at ourselves in the mirror, let's change the things that we should. So I'm, I'm quite comfortable with them being here because in their own lives, society, energy, everything is making them take account. I'm um, sorry, just to add on that, um, says Andile, I think also it's, it's important to understand that, you know, when you try to construct um, or to really try and unpack what makes a man. There are particular, there are particular categories or cultures or, part or particular contributions, you know, that help really uh, construct a man, such as religion, uh, finances, culture, yeah. um, you know, education, um, being the alpha male, um, the LGBTQI community. Someone ma mentioned mental health. There's so many of these things that really contribute to, to, to being a man. And so it was very important for us to find people that, that speak to that. Um, and if when you look at someone like Upik Zulu, Upik Zulu is a traditional Gabi, you know? So uh, we felt like he'd be one of the most appropriate people to speak to regarding that. Mm -hmm. The fact that he, he um, and you'll see in the interview, um, in the episode, when we talk to him, he really brings a very interesting dynamic and from these allegations. He's done it before in numerous podcasts. Um, you look at the podcast with Mac G. He doesn't shy away from it. And as an artist, he has a role to play in contributing to this conversation. Um, and as someone who's a role model for society, He has a role to play. So I think the episode. All right, we seem, we seem to have lost Ayanda, but I, I understand what he's saying. I agree with what he's saying. And uh, yeah, it, it is what it is. In fact, if, if uh, from the uh, fund, uh, the response fund, uh, maybe we should even go to prison and talk to Briggs and all those other guys who were perpetrated, who won the guy big pitch black Afro, because for us to really get to understand ourselves, this documentary starts that conversation. It fires it up. The fact that these people are part of it is what we need as a society because they are us. Ayiki das binyognasa abant. All right, um, I think we've come to the end of our webinar. We are now going to hand over to the media. Um, if there's anything different, team, you let me know. But I want to thank everybody, every single one of you guys for being a part of this. Um, and, you know, it's been, it's been very thought provoking. Uh, Ayanda's mom, that conversation will stay with me. I'm going to watch four episodes for the next three weeks to see what's happening. MTV Sugar, What Makes a Man premieres exclusively on MTV Base, DSTV Channel 322, Tuesday, March 1st at 9.30 Central African Time, and Wednesday, March 2nd at 10 p.m. West African Time. Follow this movement using the hashtag MTV Sugar, W-M-A-M. We're also on your favorite social media platforms and web. Check out mtvsugar.com, mtvbase.com, um, and check out betafrica.tv. Thank you so much for being a part of this. It's been such a wonderful pleasure. Have a great evening. And for the rest of us, we'll then go into the breakout, uh, breakaway rooms for, for the interview. Stay safe. Mm.